Adobe is pretty well known for being the industry standard for pretty much every creative software out there. Whether that's for working with photos, vectors, videos, audio, Adobe has its foot in pretty much any sort of creative software out there. Now, one of the last few videos I made was talking about everything that you get with an Adobe Cloud subscription. Now, while you still get a pretty decent amount for the money that you spend, it can rack up to be a pretty big bill by the end of the year. So a lot of people end up looking elsewhere for their creative softwares and eventually just ditch Adobe completely. So this video is all about the free alternatives for the Adobe Creative Cloud softwares. I decided not to put in any of the mobile applications because uh, there's a ton of them for one. And it also seems like a lot of them are already free with some paid uh, bonuses that you get if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. But for the most part, they all seem to be fairly free or are freemium. So that's why I decided not to use them in this video. Starting off with Photoshop, we have GIMP, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. GIMP is a free and open source application made by a bunch of volunteers. It has a lot of the main features as Photoshop, uh, but one big bonus for GIMP is being able to run it on Linux. Another free alternative for Photoshop would be Krita. Krita is also open source and free, but one of the big differences is that Krita is more used for 2D painting and GIMP is more for photo manipulation. So those are two different things that Photoshop are good for. These are just two separate softwares for each individual uh, workflow. Another little bonus here would be PhotoP or Photopia. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this one, but and it's a browser-based program, which means that it can run on any operating system. And one nice thing about it is that you can open up all kinds of different image files from Photoshop, Adobe XD, sketch files, PDFs, uh, raw images, and any normal kind of image files like PNG and JPEG. Next up, we have Lightroom. I'm gonna put Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic together in this one because realistically they do the exact same thing with some minor changes. And I have a whole video based on the differences that you can check up right about here. So I have three different free alternatives for Lightroom, uh, Darktable, Raw Therapy, and the brand new Nikon NX Studio. I also just made a video about this one, uh, but basically it's brand new and it's just for Nikon image files, so if you're not shooting on Nikon, then it's not much use for you. But Darktable and Raw Therapy are both two good softwares for editing your photos for completely free. For the most part, Darktable and Raw Therapy do fairly similar things to Lightroom with some various differences. There's not a huge amount difference between the two of them, but I guess you could download both of them and see which one works better for you since they're both free and open source. Next up, we have Adobe Bridge. Good thing for us, Adobe Bridge is already completely free, so you don't even need to worry about getting an Adobe Cloud subscription, and you don't have to worry about finding a different uh, alternative. You could just go to the Adobe website and find Adobe Bridge right from there and go ahead and download it. Next up, we have Illustrator, which is the vector-based art 2D uh, software. There's one main uh, alternative that I think a lot of people know of, and that's Inkscape. It does pretty much everything that Illustrator is known for with some minor differences, uh, and it's completely free and open source. Another lesser known alternative for Illustrator would be Vector.com. This is another web browser based uh, software. Uh, it lacks a lot of functionality compared to Inkscape and Illustrator, but for some more basic editing, it's perfectly great. And since it's web-based, then you don't have to worry about uh, which operating system you have for it. Next up, we have Adobe Fresco. This one is already a freemium software. I think you can get it for free and use some more basic functions with it without having to pay. But I think they also have just a Fresco-based subscription model. So you don't have to worry about buying the whole Creative Cloud subscription. You can just get just for the Fresco model itself. And since this whole sort of tablet-based drawing is still fairly new. I'd never found a good alternative for Fresco, although if you do know of one, feel free to put one in the comments because I'm sure everyone would like to know. But Fresco is already free for people who don't have the Creative Cloud subscription. Moving on, we've got InDesign. Uh, InDesign is all about uh, making layouts with images and text. So the main alternative for InDesign would be Scribus or Scribus. 
Uh, I like saying scribus a little bit more, but I think it's actually pronounced scribus. This one is another free and open source software made for originally Linux, but then also made for Windows and Mac later on. It offers pretty much all the main functions as InDesign, which makes it a great alternative for it. Another free alternative would be the web-based Lucid Press, but this one comes at some uh, lack of functionalities. And there's also a free versus a paid subscription model with them as well. So you get a little bit more functionality with paying for more. So with the free version, you only get a certain amount of pages you can work on and things like that. So if you're doing something fairly limited, then this might be a good alternative for you. If you're doing a little bit more of a bigger project, then you might want to look into Scribus or Scribus. Next up, we have Adobe XD. This is the UX UI prototyping software from Adobe. There's a whole lot of different alternatives for this one. Uh, I think a lot of them are paid, like Sketch is a very good example, but then there are a couple that are free or have free versions. Figma is a popular one that has a free starter trial uh, where you have a fairly limited amount that you can do with it, but it's still completely free for the starter pack. But one fully free and open source alternative for Adobe XD would be the Pencil Project. I have a feeling that this one is a little bit older, so it may feel a little bit clunky when you open it up. Uh, but considering it's completely free, uh, once you get used to the layout of the software, I think it's pretty good, uh, especially considering you're spending zero dollars on it. There may be more alternatives for Adobe XD, but uh, these are the two popular ones that I could find. Next up, we have Adobe Spark. This one is for editing some more basic layouts and photos and like brand based images. It's kind of hard to explain how Spark works, but Canva is a really good example of this because Canva is pretty much the same thing. And I'm pretty sure it's completely free with some added premiums on top if you want to pay for it. If you want to make some uh, colorful vectors with some text on it, Canva and Spark do it. If you want to put some text onto some photos of yours, Canva can do it. And I think if you want to edit some basic videos, I think Spark and Canva do that as well. So uh, if you're wanting to make some really easy, quick graphics, then Canva is a great alternative for Adobe Spark. And speaking of video, next up we have Premiere Pro. I'm also gonna throw in Premiere Rush in here as well because they both edit videos fairly similarly. Uh, the main and probably the most popular and well-known free alternative for Premiere Pro is DaVinci Resolve. They have their free and then their paid model. Uh, thankfully, their paid model isn't subscription. You just pay it once and it's fairly cheap for what you're getting uh, considering it is the industry standard for color correction and it can pretty much do everything that Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Audition, and maybe even Media Encoder, and maybe even Prelude, all of that can do in one software. You're getting a lot with one software. So the free version is a little bit more limited. Uh, some features you can't use unless you pay for, but if you're wanting to get your foot in the door and start learning and doing some more basic edits, DaVinci Resolve is great for you. Uh, especially if down the line you're looking to upgrade, then you can just pay that one-time fee, get access to the entire software, and then go from there and be a crazy professional editor using DaVinci Resolve. Another free alternative, which I'll be mentioning later on as well, is Blender. Blender does pretty much everything video-wise from 3D animation, 2D animation, 3D modeling, video editing, compositing, I think it pretty much does everything you'd ever need for a video editor. So, uh, and it's completely free and open source. I've personally had a few issues with the video editing aspect of it, but I never really cared to put in too much time into learning it. So that's probably on me. Staying on the topic of video, next we have After Effects. There's quite a few different options for free alternatives for After Effects. Different ones have different strengths and lack of functionalities in certain areas. But one of my favorites and the most talked about that I've found online is Natron. This one is also free and open source. And one benefit is that there's a huge community of it and the community makes a lot of the plugins for Natron. So that makes it an even better 
uh, ecosystem to use when there's always new plugins being developed for it. And I'm sure that the community that makes those plugins are also readily available to ask your questions to uh, maybe on a forum somewhere. Next up, we have Adobe Animate and Adobe Character Animator. So Adobe Character Animator is a little bit more niche, uh, especially considering the live motion capture of your face that it works with. So I don't really know of any direct competition, especially free for this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say Blender would be a good alternative for it. I know some people use Xbox Connect as their motion capture device. Uh, I don't know what software they connect it to. This is a whole new realm for me that I don't really know much about, but Adobe Animate, there is Synfig or Synfig, S-Y-N-F-I-G. This is an open source free alternative and uh, it's all about making 2D animation. Synfig has a lot of crazy different options that they have from working with vector and animating vectors from one shape to another, over 50 layers that you can work with, rigging characters by using bones in the background, and also mathematical expressions that you can use to link different things in your animation. Next up, we have Media Encoder. As I said before, DaVinci Resolve may have something to do uh, as an alternative for this as well, but Handbrake and VLC are two ideas that come to mind for Media Encoder uh, alternatives. Media Encoder is a little bit different though because it works as a render engine for Adobe softwares, but it can also convert files from one uh, file format to another. So that second feature that it works with is what VLC and Handbrake can work with. Again, there's not really any competing software that I can think of that works with the first option as a render engine for Adobe alternatives. But Handbrake and VLC are two great free alternatives, uh, both open source, and they work great for converting files um, between formats, between frame rates. They both can feel a little bit clunky at times, but I think that has to do with the fact that they're open source, which means that a lot more work is being put into the software and the development than the overall user interface and the look of it. Next up, we have Adobe Prelude. This is more for rough cuts and ingesting footage. For the free alternative, I would say Bridge would be good for the ingesting, but for the rough cuts, I would suggest using Lossless Cut. So this is a free and open source software, super small at only 100 megabytes or so. And it's really special in the fact that instead of transcoding or re-rendering your footage, it copies the selected image sequences so that it can use lossless cutting and editing instead. So this one does a little bit more than Prelude does in terms of the video editing. So this one's kind of halfway in between Prelude and Premiere Pro. Uh, you can pretty much make a whole video with this one, so it can be an alternative to Premiere Pro as well. Prelude is another one of those softwares which is a little bit more Adobe dependent. There's not really many alternatives that are directly competing against Prelude. So I kind of had to stretch this one. So uh, Lossless Cut is kind of a mix between Prelude and Premiere Pro. Next up, we have Adobe Acrobat, which I'm sure many people are familiar with. Adobe Acrobat can read, edit, and create PDFs. So, so the biggest and probably most well-known free alternative for reading PDFs is just any Chrome-based browser. Firefox, Chrome, Chromium, maybe even the new Microsoft Edge, they can all read PDFs directly from within them. You just open and and drag it to your browser and it should open it up and be able to read them. Now for creating and editing PDFs, there's LibreOffice or Libre as the French might say. Oh boy. So LibreOffice is a free and open source project. Uh, it's actually the successor of OpenOffice, which I'm sure many people are familiar with, which was the main free alternative to Microsoft Office products. So it's basically everything that OpenOffice did with newer enhancements that have come out since then, uh, which would include creating PDFs. Next up, we have Adobe Dreamweaver. So Dreamweaver is a HTML editor and then a what you see is what you get visual web editor. So Blue Griffin is one free alternative for this in the fact that it has the what you see is what you get aspect of it. 
but there's also tons and tons of different code editors if you don't want that live view. Brackets, Atom, and VS Code are three that I've used in the past. And some of them also have buttons that you can just send to your browser so you can see it live. So you don't even need that uh, live editor in the software. But Dreamweaver is a little bit more hands-on with the visual side, so that makes it a little bit more special. Brackets, Atom, and VS Code are a little bit more just based on the code itself, so it's a little bit different there. Next up, we have Adobe InCopy. Like I said in the last video, it looks kind of like a poorly designed version of Microsoft Word, and that may still be a shortcoming of my understanding of what it does. With my current knowledge, it a free alternative would be LibreOffice or Google Docs or Apple Pages if you have a Mac. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this or even any sort of text editor by itself would work as well. Next up, we have our 3D softwares. We have Dimension and Substance. So Blender would be my first guess for both of these. Substance is more for putting textures on your 3D models. So I think Blender has that. There may be more alternatives for it. Uh, maybe even a ton of plugins for Blender as well that you could use for this. But it's pretty new from Adobe right now, so I'm sure that uh, there's gonna be some new uh, products coming out to be an alternative for it soon. Dimension, I would say Blender would be the best bet for this as well. Next up, we have Adobe Audition. So Audacity and Audition are commonly known as being competitors. Audacity is the free alternative for it. Uh, it's great for anything from cutting audio, noise reduction processes, and things like that. But there's also NVIDIA RTX Voice, which is a free software for, I think, any computer that has an RTX video card in it. And that's all about noise suppression. So if you're recording a voiceover, this is where you'd want to use NVIDIA RTX Voice. Pretty much anything else for audio editing you would use Audacity for. So that is all of the desktop applications. Again, I'm gonna skip over all of the mobile applications because I think for the most part, they're all already free or freemium. So next up, we have all the additional things that come with a Creative Cloud subscription. Starting off, we have 100 gigabytes of cloud storage. Paying for that subscription will give you a lot more gigabytes than you would for a free alternative. So OneDrive and Google Drive give you, I think five gigabytes worth of cloud storage with your free email account. So theoretically you could just rack up all those different emails and get all that free storage. There's also alternatives like Dropbox and maybe even Box if they're still around. But if you really wanted to stay on top of all of those different cloud storage options, you could create a couple accounts on all of these different websites and um, grow your cloud storage from that. Next up, we have Creative Cloud Libraries. There's not really any sort of alternative for this because this is all done within Adobe Creative Cloud softwares. So I'm just gonna skip over this because there isn't really any alternative for it. Next up, there's Adobe Stock. This is stock videos, photos, and music. So for photos, you have Pexels, Unsplash, and Burst by Shopify. For videos, you have things like uh, MixKit, which is one of my favorites. And for music, there's sites like YouTube's audio library for YouTube videos, Facebook's audio library for Facebook videos, and then there's free trials for subscriptions like Epidemic Sound and uh, Soundstripe and Artlist and all, all of those. Next up, we have Adobe Fonts. The free alternative would be Google Fonts and DaFont, which is spelled D-A font. These both offer free fonts, but always make sure to check with the licenses that come with it if you can use it for businesses and personal stuff um, because not all fonts are created as fully open source like that. So make sure you're using them for the correct usage. But for the most part, a lot of them are completely free. Next up, we have Adobe Color, which is the website which you can uh, find all your different color mixes. You can already use this with a free Adobe uh, account without having to pay a subscription. So you don't have to worry about finding an alternative for this. As long as you just make an account using your email, you should be able to use it. Next up, we have Behance. This is the social media for sharing your art. 
If you're wanting to get rid of everything Adobe, you can go for something like Instagram or Dribbble, post your art there and then create a following. But I think Behance you can use without having to pay for Adobe already. So you don't really have to worry about paying for this big subscription just to use Behance. Uh, you can probably go ahead and make an account for free to use Behance that way anyways. And then coming from Behance, we have Adobe Portfolio. This is their free website builder and host for making your portfolios. This is probably the cleanest way to make a portfolio because you don't have to worry about ads like on Wix or WordPress, but WordPress and Wix also offer free websites that you can make your portfolio on. And then if you're not satisfied with those, you could always go and make your own website based off of a host like Namecheap or Bluehost, and then pay for your server and your domain name and basically make a real website from there. But that's not really a free alternative, that's just a, another alternative that you have to pay for. Then we have Mixamo, which is the online mocap uh, downloader for 3D models. It's already free and you can just use it with your Adobe account without having to pay for it. But if you really want to get rid of Adobe's workflow, then you can use mocap online, which is a website fairly similar to Mixamo that you can get all of these motion capture templates that you can apply to your models. And then finally, there is Adobe training, which is basically just training on their softwares. If you want the free alternative for that, but using Adobe, softwares and there's YouTube. And then if you want free alternative for training for non Adobe applications, there's still YouTube for that as well. So YouTube is probably the best free alternative for any sort of training for any softwares. So that is all of the free alternatives for Adobe softwares minus the mobile applications uh, in 2021. Let me know what you think. And if there's anything I missed, uh, if you've tried any of these free alternatives, drop a comment below and share your experience with them. Personally, I think I'm gonna stick around with Adobe for a little bit longer. I am curious to see if there's gonna be another company that comes around and makes a subscription like this as well. If you like this video, drop a like. If you loved it, drop a subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.